Hey guys, this is Nick and welcome to my Linux experiment. Longtime viewers might know that Elementor iOS is one of my favorite distros of all time. Even though it only releases a new version every two years, the team doesn't stay idle either, and the OS has matured and gained a lot of new features since it released in October 2018. Here is a full rundown of what's changed since Juno's release. The Desktop while Pantheon's metaphor stayed the same, with a top bar and a dock, a lot of improvements have been added to the desktop itself. In the Applications menu, it's now possible to search for system settings panels, such as Display or Keyboard. You can also look for system actions, in the language you selected or in English, such as Reboot, Shutdown and the like. The indicators also have seen a lot of work. The date and time indicator now makes it clearer which day is the current one and which day you've selected. The Bluetooth indicator has been largely revamped, with device names written in bold and using a dedicated icon depending on which peripheral type it is. Each device also will show a badge to indicate its connection status. The session indicator now displays keyboard shortcuts to lock the session and log out, and the sound indicator now allows middle clicking on the microphone icon to mute audio input and scrolling over its icon to adjust input volume. While there isn't much that really changes in how Pantheon work, all these small improvements add a ton of polish and make it a really nice shell to work in. Applications There have been many changes in Elementary's default applications. Let's start with music. Music has better sorting of tracks in all its various modes and now sports an orange accent color to match its icon. Its buttons now show a tooltip with the keyboard shortcut associated with them when you hover over them to allow better discoverability. Music also now supports the older S3M file format, and its album art is now displayed at full resolution on high DPI displays, which should make its interface really shine. Next is the file manager. File search is now more discoverable, displaying a search icon in the path bar when the user is browsing its home directory, and searchers should now be able to display more results than before. All buttons that have a keyboard shortcut associated with them will now display them in their tooltips, and you can now enable or disable thumbnails for documents and images. Keyboard navigation has been improved, allowing you to cherry-pick and select individual files or folders by pressing Ctrl plus Alt and tapping plus or minus to select or deselect specific items. Files also has seen a lot of code rewrite in 8 month and should now be faster across the board and use less memory. I still feel Files is one of the best simple file managers out there, especially with its column view. Elementary's calendar app, called Calendar, has also been tweaked a bit, especially in the looks department. Events will now make better use of color, and you can pick a specific color for each calendar from a selection based on Elementary's color palette. These colors will be displayed in the calendar list, to make it easier to identify which calendar you want to display or not. When creating an appointment, you can also search through calendars, which should help users managing a lot of those. The calendar app also has been given a nice lime color accent, in keeping with its application icon. Finally, Elementary Code, its text editor slash IDE, has seen a bunch of work, most notably allowing users to change Git branches from a context menu, making working with Git directly from the editor a lot easier. A few issues also have been fixed to better handle file saving and restoring, especially in split view mode, and buttons with a keyboard shortcut will show these in their tooltips. With Juno, the goal was to transform the Scratch text editor into a real IDE to develop Elementary and GDK apps. And while the goal is a lofty one, and I'm no developer so my judgment is pretty much worthless on the matter, code has matured very nicely. It still doesn't come close to GNOME Builder in terms of capability, but for smaller projects it's pretty much there. Settings The settings are probably the area where the Elementary team has put most of its focus. First, there is a new Appearance tab in the desktop settings, allowing users to change the font size to better adjust to their display, as well as reducing animations and disabling or enabling panel translucency. In the display settings, it's now possible to select the refresh rate for each display, and scaling changes are now applied instantly, instead of necessitating a reboot. Users switching from high DPI and low DPI display frequently are probably happier now. In the Bluetooth settings, it's now more clear when the system is scanning for devices, with a small spinner at the bottom of the window, and in the keyboard settings, the shortcut to close an application is now user-modifiable, but remains Alt plus F4 by default. 
mouse and touchpad settings have been broken up into three tabs and are no clearer, and a few options have been added, such as the ability to move the pointer with the keypad, to enable a long press secondary click, and to ignore the touchpad when a mouse is connected. Finally, sound settings have been redesigned, displaying more devices and generally being a lot more legible. While settings aren't the most crucial part of the desktop experience, these changes are still welcome, and add a bit more tweaking and customization to elementary. App Center The App Center is one of the main advantages of elementary OS, but it hasn't seen many user-facing changes since Juno's release. Its categories now have better and more distinct looks, with beautiful colored banners that scale well with high DPI displays. New categories also have been added, such as communication, finances and media production. A lot of bugs also have been fixed and App Center should use less memory and be more reactive. In general, the App Center now has 117 unique apps in all categories, available on Juno. A few of them are still stuck on Loki though, and might never see an update to Juno, unfortunately. The App Center is still the best app store out there in terms of design, app quality, and most importantly on how to reward developers, since you can choose how much you give for each application. While that's not yet in Juno, the App Center will soon support the installation of Flatpaks, and app developers will be able to ship their apps on Elementary as Flatpaks. FlatHub won't be integrated by default since it's not a curated repo, and the Elementary team feels that it might detract from the security and quality of what they ship. Look and feel Not much has changed there. The icons and the theme still look very similar, apart from a few slight changes. The switches now use a more vibrant color when using the dark mode, and they look better when using green or yellow accent colors. Apart from that, everything is pretty much the same. I do enjoy Elementary's look and feel, although as most nerds, I like to see change for the sake of change, and I could go for a revamp of the general theme. And that's about it! In the 8 months since Juno's release, I'd say it offered about as many changes as what a GNOME release traditionally ships. It still offers one of the best experiences out there, if you don't mind using a system the way it was designed to work and not being able to tweak it all that much. For such a small team, I really enjoy what Elementary is doing, and I truly believe they offer a spectacular distro. The addition of Flatpaks will solve one of the main issues I had with it, which was outdated software, and I'm seriously pondering reinstalling it instead of Manjaro on my main desktop. I'm looking forward to what the team can bring next until the next release, probably in September or October 2020. I hope you guys enjoyed this tour of what changed in Elementary OS since the latest release. If you did, please consider liking, subscribing and turning on notifications. If you really did like the video, I also have a Patreon page which gives access to monthly vlogs and all the sources of the videos I create. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!